Hey, what up all my tooth doctors and doctresses. Welcome to another episode at the Tooth Factory. Today we're going to work on one of the most important topics in dental anatomy and that is muscles of mastication. So get your pens, papers and muscles out. Let's take some notes. Make sure you go down to the Facebook and Instagram page for more printable notes and come back again for more. Right, tooth doctors, you ready for some muscles of mastication? Awesome, so let's go. We're going to discuss about temporalis, masseter, medial pterygoid and lateral pterygoid muscles. So, the muscles of mastication originate from the skull and insert into the mandible. Here's the rough origin and insertion of the muscles of mastication. How do we know this? Well, origin of a muscle is always a fixed bone. That's something that doesn't move. And insertion is always something that is movable. Well, mandible moves, right? So... On contraction, they act to move the mandible during movements of mastication. So during chewing, it moves your mandible in general. Let's get on with temporalis. All right, temporalis muscle. First of all, it is a large fan-shaped muscle that fills the temporal fossa. This area is the temporal fossa. We're going to talk about origin insertion, action and its supplies. Okay, so origin of temporalis muscle is the inferior temporal line. Inferior temporal line is roughly here. Bony surface of temporal fossa and overlying temporal fascia. So here and all the way down this direction. Where is the insertion? It is in the medial aspect of the coronoid process of the mandible. We know that there is a condyle and we know there is a coronoid. It attaches at the coronoid here. So fan-shaped attaches here. That is the insertion. Anterior margin of the mandibular ramus also goes down to the mandibular ramus. Now, what is the action? In resting tonus, which also means bilaterally allowing or maintaining the normal mandibular resting position. So when you don't talk, when you sleep, when you're just sitting there thinking... It's temporalis helping you. Also, it is allowed for elevation of mandible, retracts the mandible and pulls it back posteriorly. It participates in side to side movements of the mandible, but not as much. So we learned two things, lets you rest and lets you close your mouth. Well, the supplies, what supplies it in a nervous manner? The deep temporal branch of the mandibular branch of trigeminal nerve and zygomatic temporal nerve, which is also a branch of trigeminal nerve, but of the maxillary section. Arterial supply, deep temporal artery, middle temporal artery, and superficial temporal artery. This shouldn't be too bad. Deep, middle, and superficial temporal. Perfect. Next, the masseter muscle. It is a powerful muscle of mastication. It is quadrangular in shape, covers most of the lateral aspect of the mandibular ramus. So after temporalis attaches here, this entire ramus right here, lateral aspect, is covered by a very powerful, powerful elevator of the mandible called as masseter. It is quadrangular. Now, the structures lying superficial to the muscle. On top of the muscle, there is the parotid duct and gland, the transverse facial artery, and branches of the cranial nerve 7, which is the facial nerve. Remember the five nerve branches? This lies on top of the muscle. It's got two heads. Superficial, deep. Superficial head origins from the maxillary process of zygomatic bone, so anterior part anterior two-third of the zygomatic process of the maxilla. It's on the zygoma, zygomatic process. And the superficial head again inserts into the angle of the mandible, just at the corner. Posterior part of the lateral surface of the mandibular ramus. Great, so it's behind, it's angled, and it lodges into the ramus and angle. The deep head origins from the medial part of the zygomatic arch. Same place, just a little medial inferior margin of the posterior third of the zygomatic arch just same as superficial a little bit posterior where's the insertion well it, it isn't it isn't inserted into the upper part of the ramus of the mandible as highest coronoid process 
So right underneath the insertion of temporalis is the insertion of masseter all the way leading down to angle of mandible with its superficial head. This is a rough idea. We'll look into it later in a photograph. Actions. What does it do? It elevates the mandible. It lets you close your mouth. Powerful elevator muscle. Unilateral excursion. Yes, it does have a single masseter muscle moving mandible on the same side. Because it's on the one side, it will pull that side of the mandible up. And retrusion of the mandible. What's its apply? Nerve supply is masseter branch of the trigeminal nerve mandibular branch. The blood supply, mesetric branch of the maxillary artery. There is a pattern. Keep in mind, nerve supply is usually trigeminal for these muscles entirely, and blood supply is ideally going to be maxillary. It's just easy to remember. Medial pterygoids. This one is the inner pterygoid muscle. Let's talk about it in general. It is quadrangular again in shape. It's got deep and superficial heads. It lies on the medial aspect of the mandibular ramus. Now we're talking about the ramus on the medial aspect. Almost a mirror image of master. So we know that the masseter is outside, but the medial pterygoid is in the inside, but all just a mirror image on the ramus of the mandible. Let's talk about the superficial head, then the deep head as always. The superficial head has an origin which is tuberosity of the maxilla. We know where that is. Pyramidal process of the palatine bone. So basically we're talking posterior end of the maxilla. Where does the muscle insert the superficial head? It joins the deep head to insert into the medial aspect of the mandibular ramus near the angle. Again, mirror image of the masseter. Deep head. Its origin is medial surface of the lateral plate of the pterygoid process. So lateral pterygoid plate, medial surface, medial pterygoid, medial surface. Pyramidal process of palatine bone, just as superficial. The insertion is on the roughened medial aspect of the mandibular ramus near the angle of the mandible. Same, remember, it joins the deep head. Great. The action, elevation. And protrusion, it lets you bring your chin forward and still closes your mouth. It's got contralateral excursion. The insertion of the medial pterygoid is lateral to its origin. Now, remember this rule. When there is the insertion that is lateral to the origin of the muscle, it will take the muscle on the opposite direction, contralateral movement. If the insertion is not lateral, if it is medial to its origin, then it will have the same side involving it, like temporalis. Just a small rule. The blood supply is pterygoid branch of maxillary artery. The same pattern. Nerve supply is nerve to medial pterygoid branch of the mandibular nerve of trigeminal nerve. All right, lateral pterygoid. Last one of the family. Let's talk about it in general. It is located within the infratemporal fossa almost triangular in shape this one is triangular only horizontal muscle of mastication it's got two heads with contrasting functions the upper which is superior lower which is inferior let's take a deeper look into the superior head as always inactive during opening doesn't have anything to do with opening the mouth it is active during mandibular elevation so this one also closes the mandible with the temporalis muscle, masseter muscle, and medial pterygoid. So they're working as a family here. Active during power strokes. Every time you try and chew something really hard, thank the lateral pterygoid muscle. Closes your mouth and lets you chew hard with a power stroke. What about the inferior head? Allows depression. Remember, we said that they have two different functions contrasting function so the inferior head will allow depression and protrusion depression by acting together to pull the condyle forward and depressing the mandible protrusion by acting together are the prime protractors of the mandible it lets your chin go forward just like medial pterygoid but this one is prime what about contralateral excursion? The insertion of lateral pterygoid is lateral to the origin. Remember, lateral to the origin, contralateral. 
therefore the mouth will move on the opposite side what is the nerve supply yes yes it is the trigeminal mandibular nerve with its branch to lateral pterygoid and guess the blood supply yes it is a pterygoid branch of the maxillary artery i'm just going to summarize the functions and the muscles associated with it the elevator depressor protrusion retrusion the elevation is which is the closing of the mouth is done by right and left temporalis right and left masseter right and left medial pterygoid there is no lateral pterygoid in elevation primarily we're talking primarily depression opening the mouth done by inferior head of right and left lateral pterygoid this is it right and left suprahyoid infrahyoid muscles so something below the mylohyoid muscle but above suprahyoid it will pull it down as well protrusion it is when the mandible moves forward is done by right and left lateral pterygoid we know this prime protrusion right and left medial pterygoid they're a family they work together right and left superficial heads of the masseter only and retrusion the muscle will retract the mandible back into its normal position which ones well, posterior fibers of temporalis deep heads of right and left masseter primarily retrusion here's a diagram you can find on our facebook and instagram page that can help you remember all that's in words in images but i'm still just going to go over it we're going to talk about masseter medial lateral temporalis okay this is the ramus jaw these are all the muscles around it but the ones we're concerned about are the ones in colors okay so this is the mandible we know angle of the mandible on the outside masseter angle of the mandible on the inside medial pterygoid both run up like that lateral pterygoid we know it attaches back here up on the posterior region of the condyle all the way to the horizontal stream so remember this is the only horizontal muscle and temporalis from the coronoid process all the way up on the skull like this remember masseter quadrangular right up on the ramus helps all the strongest elevations of the mandible here's the image and hope this helped see you guys in the next one